Here we go. Okay, good morning, everybody. It's, uh, uh, this is the Monday, April 20th. No, it's not. But today is the Monday, May 16th meeting of the Wisconsin Advisory Board. It's uh, 1102. And uh, members, I'm going to call your name and uh, for roll call. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mary Lacerp Will. Hello. Thank Present. you. Angus McLeod. Here. Thank you. Clement Durkis. Here. And um, I don't have, uh, I know that um, Caroline Ellis will be, not be attending. And Rob Benchley is here. Okay, um, with that, I'll take a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Thank you, do I hear a second? Second. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, that is unanimous. All right, so with that, um, let us go right to 31 Low Beach Road which is the Iron Hollow Zalo Family Trust. And here it is. There's the application. Botticelli and Paul are the agents. And we'll go right down to, uh, do we all know where the location is off Low Beach? Yes, and we've seen this project several times. Have we, we have, known? okay. So here are the elevations. I'm going to zoom in on a little bit on the existing. Uh, the west being on the left side, moving to the right. There's the north. There's the east, which uh, faces Low Beach Road. No, it does not. South. The south you. does. I'm sorry. Yep, the south over here on the right. And we're trying to come out. Here we are. Ah. Here we go. Okay. Um, I don't see anybody here from Botticelli and Pole, but um, let's just open it up at Angus. You're kind of uh, stretched on time or compressed on time. So why don't you start if that's okay with everybody? Thank you. Um, this is a great little cottage and I feel like the, um, the, there's evidence that the cottage was built earlier than 1938 uh, aerial photos. Um, it, it may actually be uh, pre turn of the century. Um, I know it's Mary Bergman's on, and I think she has some information about that. But um, my concern is just um, the the character changing uh, with the the semi open porch where there are windows on either side, but you can still see the facade. There's a whole different approach uh, to the house uh, where the, you can go underneath the porch, and then and then you get a sense of of what was there. And I feel like that is lost. Um, when the porch gets filled in and then there's nothing really over the, the front door and it, it doesn't feel like a filled in porch because there's shingled walls on it. So it, it's almost like, you know, putting a, a shingled addition on the front of a house. Um, so it, I think it really does change the character. Um, in the back, it would be preferable if the, uh, if that addition had a lower sloped uh, roof so that it didn't interrupt the dormer. I can see that it's capturing the four pitch of the porch, but um, I think it could probably be lower and maybe slider pitch on that porch. Uh, and my final recommendation would be that the stair scoot to the back and run along that uh, addition on the back uh, and start on the north side and end on the south side uh, at the bottom uh, from the 
floor plan of the foundation, it looks like that um, could still work in the plan and not compromise it. Um, and Agnes, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, this is Rob. Can, that uh, last point you just made, could you could you just go over that uh, again? Which sure. Elevation? The the, um, the exterior stair that is replacing the bulkhead, if it ran the opposite way but started on the far left side, if you're looking on the west elevation, if it started on the far left side and and came down so that the door ended like two feet from where it is now to the left but the stair would start as far to the left at the end of the building so that um, instead Tucked of in. the yeah instead of the stair um, starting on the street side it would be starting on the back side uh, oh, I see. And, and going towards the road as it goes down yeah um, and that really I don't think changes the program much uh, but it would also sort of tuck in a little bit behind the house um, but I was just, I was discouraged to see that really it looks like the whole interior first floor and second floor will, will, um, you know, the interior walls will all change and the fireplace will go away. But I appreciate there still being a chimney on the uh, roof after it's finished. And that is all, Mr. Chair, thank you. Okay, Angus, thank you very much. Um, Let's see. Uh, um, Mary Bergman, do you uh, are are you here to help us out with this, or to give us some insights? Uh, I can try. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to refresh my memory of what the last thing we saw with this. I believe window changes. I believe there are like a at one point this was going to be moved and turned into a garage. Yeah, they were on the lot, and this is like a different iteration altogether because this yeah i believe I, they were going to move they wanted to move it and and yeah right and yeah and, and that's gonna, this, and they were gonna, uh, yeah they were going to take a, a building a, an existing garage and move it off i think right 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 so this is an entirely new application uh yeah. i was looking at what the research that we did in september of 21 um and I, you know, I guess I would emphasize the comments I made then, which is, I think the date of this house is in question. You know, we know that it was owned at one point in time by Florence Coffin Clark, who was the daughter of Charles F. Coffin, who was the manager of the Nantucket Railroad Company, treasurer of the Surfside Land Company, and involved with the acquisition and transportation of the Surfside Hotel. Um, that Coffin owned house lots on Low Beach uh, in the eight, in 1885. He had a subdivision plan that William Codd made up of those lots. Um, so it, it, throughout the INM, there are references to the Coffin Cottage, the Coffin Bungalow as early as 1903. I do not know if that house referenced the turn of the century is this house. I just think that we're, we're working in a national historic landmark and to get applications that have no history is really disappointing to see. So that's my comment. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, uh, Mary Will. I agree with Angus um, on his uh, taking I understand why they want to make the front porch more of an interior room as a structure, but it does change the place radically. And uh, the, the addition is uninteresting um, that as conceived, I mean, closing in the front porch, it, it's not, it doesn't enhance the building in any respect. And because it is still right on Low Beach Road, and because it is an historic house, as Mary points out, quite historic, um, it, it really needs to maintain uh, its streetscape. And this, while it looks fine on the sides and everything else, uh, doesn't, doesn't meet the criteria. I do like Angus's suggestion of moving the stairs to the reverse so that you really can't see them from the street. I think that's great. And it, it does buy the family extra space under the house. So that's certainly to their benefit, but 
um, we don't need to see that as, a, yeah. as, as the neighbors. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Clement. Well, I will just echo once again. I mean, the difference in those south elevations is very dramatic. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice to see a, a porch incorporated somehow. Uh, I don't know how, but it's, um, and that, well, the north elevation, they must be entering. No, that's not the main doorway. Because that's kind of a weird thing to have the porch. The doorway must be there somewhere. Uh, from the inside? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just looking at the south elevation is now got a door in it. Does that mean that's the, anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just, it, you don't get any emphasis of where the front door is. Um, I, I love the little porch, but. Yeah. Great. Looks and like they're pulling the front door forward. Looks like they're taking the old front door and pulling mm -hmm. it forward. Pulling it forward and the windows. Reason. And the windows forward. Exactly, to create an porch. interior room. Yeah. 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 And then you see that, you know, the in, you see that closed in on both sides on, because you've changed. So you've changed the, the sides as well by incorporate, pulling that porch in. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. So over here on the, what's on your screen over on the left is the original. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then they've moved the, yeah, they've enclosed the porch and put the door away. There, yep. Oh, there it is, yep. And you can see from the interior design that essentially what's happening is they're taking an old bungalow cottage and they're, they're now, by the removal of walls and whatnot, making it the absolutely most typical, um, you know, one great room, a uh, suburban Nantucket home. I mean, it'll fit in perfectly in Canonbury. It they all look the same. Yeah, you've got the kitchen island and the whole yep. open open floor plan instead of yep. the two front rooms and the yeah. I mean, why don't people? Yeah, why do people buy cottages like this and then that they don't want if they don't want them? Yeah, um, yeah. This is Rob. I I I agree that it'd be a shame to lose that feeling of the uh, that sort of front porch that faces the street where people hang out into a just a great big wall with a bunch of glass in it. I mean, to me, one of the attractiveness is about the house is how the house speaks to you when you go by it, when you stand in front of it, and then then you're not seeing that. It, it goes from quirky, funky summer house in the dunes to Bloomfield, New Jersey. <laughs> Sorry, I grew up there. It looks familiar. Great, okay, everybody. Um, any other comments? I don't see anybody else in the audience. I just see four of us here at the moment. Okay, uh, that's terrific. I will write these notes up and uh, send them off to Holly and Esmeralda. Mary Bergman, thank you for attending. Everybody thank else, you thank idea. you very much. Uh, you wanna take a motion to adjourn? Uh, I will take that motion. I will make that motion, Rob. All right. I will I... second that motion. Thank you very much, Clement. Uh, and we still have a quorum, so we can we can say goodbye. Okay, all those in favor. Oh wait, we have to uh, approve the comments. Yes, I'll take a motion to approve our comments. I move we approve our comments. Thank you. 
I will uh, say aye. Uh, thank you for the seconds. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now I'll take a motion for adjournment. Well, we've oh, already done that motion. Yeah, right. <laughs> in okay. the wrong order, but we did. Right. Into okay. So all those in favor for adjournment, it's 1117. Thank you. Well done. Uh, yes, well done, everybody. Okay, so uh, the eyes have it on adjournment, and I'm going to stop the recording. And we will thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. You bet. Mr. Chairman. All righty, <laughs> on to the next.